Davis die the freshman running back and he gets the carry and die gets up across the 45 49 yard line and into Oregon State territory really been the one that makes this offense go from a running standpoint but he's had a couple big games as of late gain of 17 it's die again on a quick snap gets down to the 40 and if you know Maris start and here to throw with plenty of time to Verdell and Verdell is into the end zone for a Dutch touchdown Brandon Schooler threw a nice block to clear the way on a flip from Herbert to Verdell on a 21 yard score CJ Verdell has done such a nice job being a all purpose back for them over the course of the year over 250 yards receiving on the year over a thousand all purpose yards gets a really nice block on the perimeter from Brendan Schooler and takes it in for the touchdown gain of nine Jefferson remains the back and knocked down right away he may lose a yard or two coming in with a big defensive play Samson new a sophomore from San Diego yeah you watch Samson new on the right side of your screen come in untouched off the backside and leads the Pac-12 in explosive plays and if he's unable to go that's a big deal for this Oregon offense and CJ for Dallas loose inside the 40 of Oregon State excellent blocking CJ up front from Calvin Throckmorton who is and moving in on some career marks breaking through is for Dell to the goal line and stop right at the goal line 100 yard rushing games and a chance to punch it in for Dell straight ahead Touchdown catch to go with a touchdown run. That's now nine touchdowns this season. Running, receiving for the redshirt freshman C.J. Verdell. Yeah, we talked earlier about the, the role that Travis Dye has in this offense as well, but C.J. Verdell is really the train that makes this thing work for the Oregon offense. Mario Cristobal, very much a run-first guy. Dana Point, California, Mission Viejo High School. Herbert fakes, fires, and tipped. Still caught at the 25-yard line by Jacob Breeland. And Breeland battling inside the 10. And that ball was deflected. Verdell, three touchdowns today. <laughs> Nothing advantage as tight end Ryan Bay helps with a block there. Anytime this Oregon team lines up in their tight formation with this offensive line, running behind the left guard Shane Lemieux and the left tackle Calvin Throckmorton, they feel good about it. This group, really talented, has had some injury issues over the course of the year, but when coming off the edge as a pass rusher, such a valuable part to this defense they're missing today. Jack Coletto is in with a toss. That's almost. Is it? Yes, it is intercepted. Coletto, as Nick Pickett picked it, Coletto used to use it. It's an interception for a touchback. First down, Oregon. And yeah. usually Coletto's in to run the ball. He tried to flip it, and then Adrian Pickett was there. Yeah, this is a tendency breaker thing. He's typically a Wildcat quarterback. They suspected he would run the football. Oregon State tries to sell that, and he goes with... I guess the Tim Tebow jump pass is what we call it. We haven't seen that consistently since Tebow's years with Florida. And it uh, chilly and damp most of the morning here in Corvallis. And uh, on the blitz, he gets rid of it, but they're running. Jefferson had nowhere to go. And on a third down play, they lose yardage. And now that may set up a field goal opportunity. Lamar Winston, terrific for the Ducks. Yeah, trying to set up a screen. You watch on the right side, Blake Brandell, the left tackle, tries to get out and get in front of Lamar Winston. And Lamar Winston still is carried 15 times for 92 yards. Gets it again, and Verdell down the sideline inside the 20 of Oregon State. And over 100 yards rushing today. All running plays as Travis Dye is into the end zone for another Ducks touchdown. A 15-yard run. 
on an 11 play drive and they were all running plays as Tyler Shuck took over right before the end of the first half and Braxton Burmeister at quarterback the sophomore ran this series with Justin Herbert out and Verdell carrying the load and then die punching it in Yeah, once again two Oregon State defenders there to make a play and Dye is just able to take advantage of the penalty. All the way up to the 49, Case Rogers is in. And running back, creativity back to Luton. And the ball is fumbled. And Oregon's on it. It's Lenore. He may have knocked the ball loose. We'll see who came up with the recovery for the Ducks. Ruin on the field as a series of backward passes. Recovered by Oregon. So First down. Gus Cumberlander, the six foot seven juniors who wound up recovering the fumble football. Yeah, he also made a timely fumble recovery last week to seal the win against ASU. But on that play right there, you know, you get the idea. It's a, it's a rivalry game. You want to see some trick plays and catch the other team off guard. But in the elements right now, with the rain coming down like it is, there's a lot of ball handling that has to take place way behind the line of Sprax and Burmeister throw the football. Three tight ends in. Over 250 rushing yards as a team for the Ducks. And add to it, it's a C.J. Verdell touchdown. His fourth of the day. A 14-yard run. When Mario Cristobal got here, this is the brand of football that he envisioned playing with these guys up front. That interior was Shane Lemieux, Jake Hansen, Dallas Warmack. Moving guys in obvious run situations and still able to get critical yards for a touchdown for C.J. Verdell. Verdell, 145 yards, three rushing touchdowns, one receiving touchdown. Four, but it just really hasn't been part of their identity. Verdell is loose again. All the way up across the 44-yard line, Sean Wilson ran him out of bounds. I mean, he is not tiring at all on his 21st carry, and he picks up 33 yards. Yeah, C.J. Verdell more than willing to carry a heavy load. They're asking him to carry today, especially in these situations with the rain and the young quarterback in the game. The conference with some outstanding coaches, players, programs, and even in this state, pressure coming. Luton has to get rid of it, and it's picked off. Thomas Graham, and touchdown Oregon. Takeaway in this game for the Ducks and quick producing points. Looked like it might have been tipped by someone up at the line of scrimmage for Oregon. Oh no, he just leaves it behind him. Thomas Graham steps in front of it. Second interception of the year, first pick six of the season. Building on a strong and return a kickoff. That's what it's been like for Oregon State. Jefferson goes nowhere and Samson new play caller at the University of Washington back in 2016 when they went to the CFP playoff against Alabama Luton avoiding a sack as Troy Dye was in on him well and had Chip Kelly by the way of course they'll have a nice break before their bowl game I hope it's not serious Travis Dye to the end zone it's another duck score And Oregon pouring it on now, a 39-yard touchdown run. And over 360 rushing yards for this Oregon team. Oh, when they run behind those pulling guards and tackles, they're right there, Shane Lemieux coming around. They are so good, and no one even gets their hands on travel. Well, except right there at the line of scrimmage, and everybody else, he goes untouched all the way to the end zone. Yeah, it's almost like a wave goodbye. The <laughs> hand that... Can't forget, he's still in the process of building kind of his vision here. For the Oregon Ducks after the Mark Helfrich era and the Roy Taggart era, now the Mario Cristobal era. And another interception yeah. by, by Thomas Graham. His second of the game and the fourth takeaway. Jim Lovett's defense under Cristobal. And Luton suffering the interception. And now this one's off the rails for Oregon State. Yeah, it turned out to be a really frustrating day, day for Jake Luton. As Thomas Graham breaks on that football and wrestles it away from Timmy Hernandez. 
as the Oregon offense takes the field. And, and Chris, that's been one of the most interesting things about the Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is, and sometimes as a leader of an offense, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, there's there's two types of, of leaders, those that lead by example and those that lead verbally, and I think ideally that matchup. C.J. Verdell is in for his fifth touchdown today. Four on the ground, one through the air. But what a day for C.J. Verdell. Now at 187 yards. We talked about him only needing 212 to reach 1,000 yards on the season. Probably end up short of that today. But five touchdowns.